So let's get to it. First off, this is a complete beginner's routine for handstands. That means that you need no previous experience. In fact, this is designed for the person that's never tried to kick up into a handstand, that has a lot of fear around that, that doesn't feel like they are confident in their body's strength to hold a handstand. Now, if you're a little bit ahead of this, have no fear. We will be doing a more intermediate version of this routine. If you would like to see that soon, then comment below, let us know, and we'll get that out sooner than later. So one of the problems I see with people beginning the handstand is they'll get inspired to want to do a handstand, and you go outside and you, you try to kick up um, a bunch of times and all that ends up happening is you, you fall down and uh, your confidence becomes super low and you decide that the handstand is not for you. Well, there's actually a process that allows you to build up strength, mobility, and confidence so that you can put a little bit extra work in up front and then start floating onto your hands very soon in the future. So we're gonna go over all of the exercises in detail and the full routine with sets and reps will be at the end of this video. Let's get on those hands. So one of the keys to initiating your handstand journey and to be able to maintain your health while you're getting better and better at handstands is to take care of your wrists. So think about it, just as the feet and the ankles support us every day walking through life, now we're turning our hands and our wrists into those feet and ankles. So we need those to be strong, flexible, and resilient to hold our body weight upside down. So in order to explain this properly, we're gonna kick it to my good friend Josh, who's out in the field. Thanks, Josh. And as Josh stated, the wrists are so important for beginning your handstand journey and continuing your handstand journey. So the main positions that we wanna look at for the handstand is going to be this position, right? So we wanna have flexible and strong wrists here so we can load the forearm over the hand. And now the other one that we wanna pay attention to is this, because if we're always jamming here, then we also wanna give our body the, the reverse and opposite effect, right? So we're gonna achieve this by starting out on our hands and knees like this. And what we're going to do is we're gonna start with a finger push up. So it's just like it sounds. You're going to get those shoulders right over the hands. You're gonna press your fingers hard into the ground and you're going to press the palm up putting all the weight into the fingers. Now what's great about these exercises is you can gauge how much intensity you put into those wrists. So in the beginning, you may not be putting a whole lot of weight into the hands, but as you become stronger, you can shift more and more of your body weight into the hands to get more out of this. You can also start to lean the shoulder forward. So now I'm decreasing the angle here, which means it's going to be a bigger stretch and it's going to take a bit more strength to do these really nicely and properly, right? So these should always feel really nice. There should never be any pain. And if you're getting pain, then that means put more weight into your knees and just move through your range of motion. Now we're gonna do the opposite here, which is going to be starting with our knuckles down on the ground like this, and then we're going to open up the hand and we're gonna press the back of the hand down into the ground, like so. Now in the beginning, you're probably gonna to wanna to bend the elbows here because it's gonna be quite intense on the wrists. Over time, I can work to straighten my elbows more and more and that's gonna be more and more of a stretch. And just like the previous exercise, we can start to put more and more weight into the hands which is going to require more strength from the hands, wrists, and forearms. So that is our wrist warm up to keep those wrists happy so you can get on your hands more and more. Back to you, Josh. Now our next exercise is the scapular push-up. A scapular push-up is very important for the handstand because we start to learn how to push and control the shoulder with the elbow straight, which is the same as the handstand. Now in order to do a good handstand, you really have to press your shoulder up 
right? We need to be able to elevate the shoulder and that comes from really reaching through. So in the scapular push-up, we're learning how to do that without being upside down, so it's much easier. So to perform the scapular push-up, first start on hands and knees and keeping the elbow straight, push your shoulder blades all the way to the side and you're really gonna squeeze your chest, you're gonna try to round your upper back as much as you can. Then you're going to reverse that motion by squeezing the shoulder blades together. Still try to keep some tension in your core here. Now, reverse and push to the side once again. Now once you feel comfortable here, you can start to go onto your feet and do this in a plank position. Now what I love about the scapular push-up is we're not only learning how to control our shoulder and push into the ground, but we're also getting some core training as well. And we really wanna squeeze the core as much as we can, squeeze the butt. This is all going to contribute to getting tighter in your handstand, which makes a much better handstand. And one of the most important things in the handstand is understanding how to align your body upside down. If we're, if, if we're like this, it's gonna be much harder to balance. But if we're in a straighter line and we can get the shoulders over the hands, we can get the hips over the shoulders, and we can get the legs and feet over the hips, then it's going to be so much easier to balance. So enter our next exercise, which is the hollow hold. Now the hollow hold is going to train your core. It's a really, really great core activation exercise, but it's also gonna teach you some, some proprioception. Proprioception. It's also going to teach you some coordination. So when you're trying to find that good straight body line in your handstand, it'll become easier. So we're gonna take it to Josh in the field once again to explain this one. So the hollow hold, great for handstands, and also we get to train those core muscles, right? So we're all excited about that. We're gonna start down on the ground and Beginning with this beginner variation, what I want to do is I want to bring my knees up and I'm tucking them towards my chest. I like to squeeze my knees together as well because that really locks things in. Now the name of the game here is forcing the lower back down into the ground, okay? I raise my upper back off of the ground and as I really squeeze that lower back to the ground, it really closes off the rib cage and ensures that I'm using all of these core muscles here, okay? Now from here, I'm gonna start with just reaching my arms up to the ceiling. I'm really reaching, right? The shoulder is reaching up. I'm just gonna hold this position, right? And you'll feel all of these core muscles really turn on. Now, our next variation, once that's becoming easier, is to take these hands and let them lower to the ground in a more overhead position. Because guess what? That's what a handstand is, right? We have our arms overhead. So now we start to train engaging these core muscles while my hands are overhead and this becomes more challenging, right? So we can hold this position. Now, last progression, once you're becoming stronger there, is to straighten my legs, right? And the more I can straighten my legs and lower them down to the ground, this emulates more of a handstand position. Last variation, this is gonna be hard, I won't be able to talk quite as much anymore, but I start with my good tucked position, I bring the hands down to the ground, I'm tucking my chin, upper back is still off the ground, now I straighten the legs, you can hang out here, as you get better, we can lower the legs down to the ground. I'm still forcing my lower back down into the ground. And woo, that becomes intense. One of the problems that we run into when learning the handstand as an adult is that the shoulders are a bit stiff. So think about it, when I'm upside down, I wanna be able to press this ground just like this. But if I don't have the shoulder flexibility to reach that position, it's gonna become a lot harder. Now keep in mind that you don't need perfectly flexible shoulders. You can still do a handstand with a little bit of shoulder stiffness, but we do want to put in work towards getting closer and closer to a really nice overhead position. So one of the best stretches for the handstand is to hang off something. Now the hang naturally pulls your arm and shoulder into that good handstand position. The great thing about the hang is that we can just let gravity do the work. All you have to do is get your hands onto a bar, a tree branch, some gymnastics rings, and let the torso and legs be pulled downwards while the arm 
is being pulled the opposite way. Now consider the hollow hold. Remember, we're trying to find that good body line without overarching our lower back and letting the rib cage flare. We can think about that same technique while we do our hold and you'll get an even better stretch. The other thing to think about while you're hanging is to try to breathe deeply. Breathe naturally. Don't hold your breath and don't start to hyperventilate. Now, if you're doing this training at your house and you don't have something to hang from, well, first off, I'd recommend just getting yourself a doorway pull-up bar. That way you can hang and stretch all the time. But in the meantime, you can use the doorway stretch. This won't be quite as effective as the hang, but it'll help start opening up your stiff shoulders. So simply put your hands on the top of the door frame and start to let, let your chest drift through the door. Now, once again, don't arch the back and don't let the rib cage flare, resist that, and you'll feel a good stretch coming through this front of the shoulder. Trust me, if you have stiff shoulders like I used to, you wanna spend a lot of time here. Over time, you're gonna feel those mobility gains and those will transfer into strength and handstand gains. The next up, we have the bear walk. Now I love the bear walk for starting to develop strength in the overhead pushing position, which is what the handstand is. Also, bonus, we get a little hamstring and calf stretching as well. That could probably benefit us all. So to do the bear walk, we start in a downward dog style position. Now from here, what I want you to do is move one arm forward. And when you do that, you're going to move the opposite leg forward at the same time. Now, using this contralateral fashion, we start to crawl forward, keeping the elbow straight, trying to keep the knee straight, and really pushing into the ground. Feel yourself push and then pull yourself forward. I love the bear walk because it is a fun way to develop your strength and mobility and it carries over to the handstand so much. So those first five exercises are all preparatory work for the handstand. So we're building up our joint strength, we're building up our mobility and range of motion, we're building up our activation patterns and coordination, so we will have a really strong base to start going upside down. And now it's time to invert. So if you have some fear around the handstand, you're just not comfortable with being upside down quite yet, then we're gonna start at a very low level progression of a handstand hold. So what I want you to do is find something to elevate your feet slightly. Now, the more fear that you have, the less you wanna elevate. So you can start with something just a few inches to a foot off the ground. You're going to place your feet onto that surface and then you're going to assume that same downward dog style position that we use for the bear walk. Now, in the beginning, the more that you're in this downward dog position, the less inverted you will be, right? Now, what I want you to do is slowly walk the hands backwards. Now, this is going to make it so your hips come more above your hands. Now we're getting into more of this upside down inverted position. And if you want a little bit more, you can start to lean your hips forward, right? Now we're getting those hips over the hands. Now the next natural progression would just be to move your feet onto a higher and higher surface until we're really stacked through the hand, shoulder, and hip. This is how we build up some confidence from just getting comfortable being upside down, calming our nervous system through steadying our breath and to really start pushing that ground away, just like we did in those scapular push-ups. We push the ground hard, we squeeze the core muscles, and we breathe. So for a lot of people, we'll just spend some time here. We'll spend a few weeks of just holding this position and building up this tolerance to being upside down. Now, if you have a bit less fear around going upside down, and you're confident that your shoulders are strong enough to hold you and your wrists are good to go, then we can start walking up the wall. So I like to have people start with their feet right up against the wall and in a strong plank position with those shoulder blades all the way pushed to the side like that scapular push-up. Now what I want you to do is slowly start to walk your hands 
back. Now, once you find a good position where you're confident to lift one leg up onto the wall, place one foot up on the wall. Now, slowly lift your other foot up on the ground until both your feet are on the wall. So now, depending on your confidence, you can just hold this position right here. But if you want to get yourself even more inverted, then start to walk your hands back and at the same time, walk those feet up the wall. Now, the more that you move your hands towards the wall, the more upside down you're going to go. So my suggestion is to start the first few sessions off with keeping your hands further away from the wall and just getting comfortable there. Now, once the confidence goes up and the strength goes up, walk your hands closer and closer to the wall until you're in that real upside down position. There's no rush to get to this position. Take your time. Do some sessions with just building up the confidence. Now, once we find that inverted position, let's start thinking about some things that'll make our handstand more successful. So number one is, like I've said a bunch of times now, really pushing into the ground and really trying to elevate your shoulder to your ear. Now, everyone's natural tendency is going to be to really overarch their lower back in the beginning here. So what we wanna do is we wanna cue our body to keep that straight body line. Now for most people, the best cue here is just to squeeze the core and to squeeze the butt. But everyone's different and you may find a cue that works even better for you. What about kicking up to the wall the other way with my back to the wall? So for some of you guys that don't have a lot of fear around the handstand, this is another great option for you. But be aware that when you kick up with your back to the wall, the tendency is to arch the lower back even more in this position. So really, really try to resist this by squeezing the core and squeezing the butt. In my opinion, the chest facing the wall is a superior version because it forces you to use more strength from the front side of your body. But on your handstand journey, a combination of both can be really, really effective. So that is where we stop this beginner's routine. Now notice that we're not kicking up into a handstand without the wall yet. Take some time here to build up your confidence, maybe a month, maybe two months, maybe three months. And when you go to start kicking up in the middle of the room or outside, you're gonna feel a lot more confident in your shoulders and your body's ability to be upside down and you'll start getting those handstands a lot faster. If you are at the point where you do want to start kicking up, then comment below that you want that intermediate routine and and maybe we'll do it. Maybe. I don't know. So I'm getting something. Okay, Josh in the field has a few more tips for you guys to think about while you're doing this training. Let's go over to him. Hey guys, so three quick tips that's going to make your handstand journey a bit easier. Ooh, your boy's getting a little beefy, been eating a little extra protein, huh? So tip number one is when you're doing your handstand, keep this pointer finger pointed straight ahead, right? Now, if your wrists are feeling really tight, then you can start to move that hand outwards a little bit. That's gonna take some pressure off the wrist. It's not a long-term fix. We still wanna work on our wrist mobility to get this pointer finger straight. But in the beginning, if you do have some stiffness, you can pull out a little bit. Now, number two, we come to this elbow. What's up, Mr. Elbow? So what's really important about the handstand is developing the ability of the straight arm strength, right? And that's gonna come with this straight elbow. So really cue yourself to straighten out that elbow while you do all of these holds and whatnot. You're gonna feel like you're stronger here, right? It's natural, but maybe you'd be stronger in the short term, but in the long term, it's really gonna pay off for the handstand if you get that elbow straight. Tip number three, to take your time. Okay, so I've never met anybody that's been able to develop a really nice handstand in just a week or just two weeks or even a day, right? So just commit to doing this for a good amount of time. Do it for a few months. You will definitely, definitely, most definitely see some progress and be getting closer and closer to holding the actual freestanding handstand. That's it. Okay guys, so we're gonna, I'm gonna flash the title card of the actual routine right here on the screen right now. I'd recommend taking a screenshot, 
and just always revisiting this video to make sure that your form and technique on all of these is correct. So if you are just getting started on your handstand journey, and you're gonna use this routine to start building up that confidence in the handstand, then comment below. I want to know how are you feeling? Are you motivated? Are you ready to get that handstand? I know you are. If you enjoyed this, give this video a thumbs up. We truly appreciate it. Follow us on Instagram. We are posting a bunch of cool stuff on Instagram. It's at the strength side. We are on our journey to a million subscribers. So if you want to come along from the ride, if you want to support us along the way, then just click that subscribe button. Subscribe to strength side. And now I'm going to go train my handstand. I'm going to bring you guys along with me. Let's do it. Oh wow, it's really windy. Yes, I am the crazy guy in the neighborhood with the shirt off doing handstands in the driveway. Yes, of course that's me. So there's something that I want to try out. I see people do this on, or I've seen somebody do this on Instagram before. I don't know how that looked, but it felt kind of cool. A little L position with the legs. That's cool. Ah, I think I got that. Let me try that again. First, gotta shake it out a little bit. Okay. I haven't tried one of those in a while. That's not bad. It's pretty good. Wasn't happy with the last one. So I was trying to start from more of a dead stop there. I think I, I think it was okay. I don't really train those at all. So it's cool to say that I can do that now. I could never do that before. So hell yeah, man. You ever do work in your driveway using the recycling bin as your stand-up desk? Yeah, me either, but today I'm doing that. Got my little slack line here. I'm not too good at slacking, but uh, I could go on the beginner line. And I just set up this rope yesterday that I'm stoked for because I need more pooling in my life, so this is going to be a lot of fun. <laughs> Alright, that's not quite there, but that's probably the closest it's ever been. Actually, I haven't really tried that out very often, but I could see myself with a little bit of work there getting that and maybe, I don't know, how long does it take? Six months? A year? It always takes time, that's for sure. Guys, if you made it this far, I appreciate you. Actually, if you like these longer uploads, comment below. Uh, sometimes I really enjoy just making longer videos, really dive into stuff. Before we get out of here, I want to highlight a few of my primal athletes in this last class. I'm going to have Ryan pop it on the screen right now. Some of these guys unlocking their first handstand, getting to five seconds, 10 seconds in the handstand. Really, really dope to see. Nothing brings me more joy than to see people's like excited, pure blissness of holding the handstand for the first time. If you want a little coaching in your handstand and other movement, we're gonna have a new primal athlete class starting very, very soon. We run a few of these throughout the years and throughout the year and they are extremely fun. So if you're interested in diving deeper, getting coaching from myself and Trevor, then that might be for you. We'll pop a link in the description. Guys, strength side, we got uploads every Friday. We got new apparel line coming super soon. Ooh, nice long sleeve for you guys that the weather's already starting to cool down. And um, like the video, subscribe to strength side as always. Yeah.